The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Unu Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. Hey everybody, welcome to Talk Live Paranormal with Shannon and Mr. Bill. I am Mr. Bill. Uh, tonight, Shannon is going to try to jump in here. Again, there's not really some computer issues other than the fact that bad weather, which everybody seems to be having in the northern part of the United States, is got Shannon without electricity right now. Um, that really sucks, but... We're going to keep moving forward. She's going to try to jump in and join us. But tonight, once again, I've got a very good friend of mine, uh, Mr. Jake, is jumping in here behind us. So, so when he when he's in here, uh, Miss Jake, where are you at? You with me? Yep, I am. All right. So tonight, first of all, I want to say. To all those men and women serving in the armed forces around the world, anywhere, everywhere, thank you guys very much for what you do. Thank you for li for being with us. Thank you for uh, help uh, doing what you do to keep us safe and keep the United, the United States safe. Thank you for your service for all those men and women out there that have served in the past and did your time, did what you needed to do, and came home. Thank you for your service. But everybody else that's still out there serving, you guys come home, come back to us. That's what we want you to do. Come home and be safe. Thank you guys very much for what you guys do. We're very grateful. So, um, Jake and I have already discussed this a little bit. I kind of want to jump back into... And kind of pick up where we left off last week. Um, we were talking about the differences in the different what what is a spirit, a specter, a ghost, and you know we discussed that a lot of it. it you know, it, it's all energy. Uh, there's ghosts and spirits are on on different uh, frequency levels than we are, um, but they do they connect with us somehow. So it's kind of a different way of thinking about it, but someone sent me a, well, not someone, Miss Shannon sent this to me, and I want to read this because it makes a lot of sense. And Jake, you jump in whenever you want to on this one. Okay. Um, it, what she sent me says, your soul family are those that are tuned into your frequency. You sense a strong connection beyond blood or race. You're connected by energy and vibration. Through quantum, through quantum communication, they intuitively answer your silent call and show up bringing unconditional love and support at all the perfect times. You share an unspoken level of understanding. They just get you and what you're about. For those people, be thankful. They are your, your reminders from the universe that are that on the deepest level of our existence, we are one. We're all one. So Shannon sent that to me. I really, really liked it. Um, I liked what it said. It kind of worked into what we were talking about. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly where we left off last week. Do you remember, Jake? I don't. Um, we talked about so much that night. Yeah, no. It's all kind of blending it's, into one. It's, so I'm going to kind of pick a spot here and see if any of this. Um, Jake, you you actually brought up something. Let's jump right into that. Why don't you go ahead and read what you what was sent to you? Uh, yeah. So I had a friend who I sent the recording of our show to. She wanted to hear it, and there at one point uh, you were talking about where do spirits get the energy uh, to manifest. And yeah. a couple of ideas were tossed around, one of which was that it comes from uh, the Earth. And what she sent me was uh, that she thinks that intelligent spirits 
which are the ones that are going to be the ones that communicate with us, that do the knocks and the taps when we ask them to do light up the EMF detectors, that kind of stuff. Uh, she brought up a good point, and she suggested that uh, intelligent spirits have the capability to manipulate situations or create situations to evoke some of those emotions um, out of people or uh, create situations where they get an alternative energy source, whether it be emotional energy or electrical from batteries or equipment or otherwise. And I thought that was a really, a really interesting point to bring up because when we talk about intelligent spirits, we talk about their ability to interact with our plane. And if they can interact with our plane, why wouldn't they be able to um, play on situations or manipulate a situation? Now, that can sometimes take a negative connotation, and, and I want to be very clear that I'm not saying that if this is what's happening, that all uh, spirits or all entities are trying to do this in a negative way. But I think it, it's certainly possible that they can manipulate a situation in order to uh, get their own energy source. So I thought you, that was a really good point. When you first sent that to me and I read it, I thought, um, I don't think so. Now, but now, so that was my first initial reaction. Um, but then I've had some time to think about it and to process it and let it sink in a little bit more. My thought on that one is, yes, I do honestly believe that it, it – is true. There is, <clears throat> excuse me, the ability for them, they, sometimes they don't need a lot of energy to make something happen. Now, at first I thought, well, they've got, we've got to give them the energy for anything to happen. But having the ability to produce, you know, to just take what energy they can and make something happen, the first thing that does is invokes a a reaction from us, whether it be fear, happiness, sadness, um, anything. And one of the things, you know, we may go into a room and, you know, I really don't feel anything in here. And then you'll hear something or something will happen. And you look around and what's the first thing we do? We turn on a piece of equipment or we turn, mm -hmm. you know, we turn, we turn on an EMF detector. So that you're right. They have just invoked a, or just done something to get our attention to whether it be an emotional energy or a physical energy from uh, you know a bad uh, electricity or a or you know f to just bring you know we call other people into the room we call hey guys something just happened here so five or six or seven people come in that room and now you've got all these energies combined in there that they can draw upon they can they can reach out and get that energy and pull it off so we are kind of their battery source for them allowing them to go okay now that you're in here now i can i can i can try to get more energy on the flip side of that though when you're alone and something comes through one of our very first reactions is fear and fear is a natural reaction that everyone has and everyone goes through it's not something you know a lot of times we hear people talking about um, I don't get scared. You know what? Everyone has fear. Everybody has a little bit of line of fear out there where they're not quite sure, you know, hey, what's going on here? Um, something ain't right. Whether you're, uh, you know, Rambo and you step up and go, well, I'll get them. I'll take them out. You know, that's what I'm going to do. Or you're like us going, uh, I don't know if I actually want to be in here. I think I'm going to leave. I don't think I like this. It's still a response, and it's a it's it's a charged response internally where you're putting off more energy. So I think yes, I would have to a hundred percent agree that they can do something to invoke more, to get a reaction, to get more energy, and and then which charges them and puts off more and more, and then we do more and more to allow it to come through. So I agree with that. And, and you were talking, uh, and I another thought popped into my head, and you mentioned if more people enter the room, uh, how that can sometimes create a larger energy source. And what I started thinking about was um, this idea that every object, 
gives off some amount of energy just on its own. Uh, and that energy is on the light spectrum, and it's actually infrared. That's why with night vision goggles, you're able to see things. is because they naturally give off that infrared uh, yep. wavelength. And so then I was thinking, I was like, well, could that be a source for spirits to use as well? Now, because it's below the spectrum of color, that we as humans can see it's a little it's got less energy uh than ultraviolet which uh would have which is on the other side of the uh, color spectrum that we as humans can see so then i thought well if we bring more people in now we've got more objects giving off that infrared radiation collectively that's going to add up together to create a larger amount of energy so then Maybe that's why sometimes when we've got more people in a room, we tend to get a little bit more uh, activity. But then the flip side popped into my head, which is what I've observed in the field. And that is a lot of times when you have more people in a space, you get less activity. Well, would it be because... Could it be that there's less activity just because there's the wrong type of energy or someone in there is literally putting off the wrong or something they brought in the room is putting off a wrong energy or so if we go, if we go back to that, that thing that I said earlier, um, your soul families are those who are turned into your tuned into your frequency. So say, say we, we go to an area and I'm with some, I'm with a group of people or I'm, I'm alone and something there is completely tuned into my frequency is trying to get my attention and it isn't scared of me because let's face it we don't know if they we we scare spirits away or if we hurt things or we do things that w that'll make them want to leave and not be with us but we do have the ability you know sometimes sometimes you'll get energies that'll come in and they'll they'll stay there, and they'll want to be doing things. And you're right; we get more people to come in. Could it be that someone else is coming in, and whatever energies they're putting off, and that whatever's attached to them, can invoke a set, almost like a set of fear in the uh, spirit that's the, that's already with us, and then, or something happens, and they and they almost negate each other and stop it from coming through. Do you think that's possible? I think that is possible, and I would even take it one more step further. So instead of it just being a, maybe the energies aren't quite right, but what do we as humans do a lot of the time when there's a lot of people around us? Me, particularly, I'm not as likely to do things just because I'm like, oh gosh, I'm on the spot, everyone's looking at me, everyone's expecting something to happen, what if I don't give their expectations? I'm not saying that spirits or entities are going to go through that same thought process. But I think there is something to this idea that if they're intelligent and they're able to communicate with us, uh, then why wouldn't they experience some of those similar uh, emotions, I guess, for lack of a better term. So when more people enter their space, are there going to be some entities that are going to kind of puff out their chest a little bit and try and, and dominate? the space sure i think most of the time at least from what i've seen is things kind of back up a little bit and i think it's a, it might even be a little bit of an intimidation factor and you mentioned this idea of being scared uh, with certain people or, or certain types of energies that would then come into the the space and i think that's exactly what we're talking about here is if they are intelligent and they can communicate and they can understand and they can manipulate situations why couldn't they also experience the full range of emotions as well, including fear, intimidation, uh, all these other things that might keep them from feeling comfortable enough to do those, um, those uh, things that would give us evidence. So well, not, making knocks or moving things around. Not only that, but... Like it, 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 it's a there's a fear of intimidation that could go along with that. When you've got, you know, 
and let's let's take our human side of it for 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 instance. You may have someone who's very outgoing, very outstanding, um, you know, likes to likes to bullshit with people, talk with people. But when a new group of, or somebody else comes in the room, there could be the factor of, okay, well, you know what? I don't know who this is, I, I, or not really. I don't know. I've never been around this. I'm just gonna shut up for a little while, and I'm gonna back off and just blend into the background because that that spirit, that other spirit, or that person is overpowering um mm-hmm. they just they don't they don't know how they it's not they don't know how they just decided you know what i only wanted to talk with the two of you or that are already in here the one of you that was already in here and i think that is kind of the factor when we do private investigations that when we go into a home where you know people are talking about my child's getting scared because they see this and they see this and they see this and we go there and we don't see it it's because we're the new face we're the new yep. faces they've never seen before. They don't know. Or something that we have connected to us already is overpowering. And they look at it going, um, I don't know why you're here, so I'm just going to keep quiet. Like you get, you know, you get kids that say, I see, I see this, I see that. And the parents are going, no, it's not. No, it's not. And then after a while, the parents are going, wait a minute, I see it too. What the hell is going on here? So. If that's the if there's an intimidation factor that way, then there's an issue going there because now that once that the once the spirit or the entity has shown themselves to the child who is of an open mind and a mindset that is saying you know uh, you know is, is is still intimidated and is still still young and frail, all of a sudden. There's a different mindset here now. That's that's an adult. There's somebody else there. So if I intimidate the child enough, then I show myself to the adult that's always here, or the other other being, the other person that's already here, and I scare them too. And now they're you know I've got them going. Now I can keep showing to them. Oh wait, who are these new people? I don't understand who these people are. Why are you here? Um, I'm not going to say anything to you because I don't know what to expect from you yet. I haven't scared you yet, or I haven't intimidated you yet. So, I, I, I'm going to agree with you saying that yes, there's a you know that I think spirits who remember it's it was where was that one that I said a sp- what, what you know first and foremost a spirit is the essence and the energy of a previously living living human being lacking all of its physical senses of sight, sound, and touch. Physical, physical. But they can do enough, they can draw enough energy to be seen sometimes and sometimes be physical. So they're lacking all of it, but right now they're just there. Have I lost anybody yet? No, I'm with you. Okay, well, I hope somebody's with me because I'm starting to lose myself in my own mind here, which isn't a hard thing to do because let's, let's face it. Sometimes my mind just doesn't play right. It goes different directions on different ways and different things. So, um, ouch. Legs are getting stiff on this chair. Um, so, yeah, I do believe that, that they, yes, they can draw energy or manipulate the surroundings to get the energy they need to do whatever they need to do. Sorry, I didn't mean to yawn there. Ooh, where'd that come from? So, here's what I want to throw out to everybody. So, my very first proposal is that when you're performing a ghost investigation, or unfortunately, people call them ghost hunts, um, doing a, you know, when you're performing a, I'm going to call it a ghost hunt just because it rolls off the tongue. When you're performing a ghost hunt expedition, it is to provide an energy source for entities to utilize. If you go in with really good energy, if you, and and I think you've seen it too, Jake. When because we've done a bunch of these together. When people are having a good time, when they're laughing, they're joking, you know, and they're you know they're 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 picking on somebody because you know let's face it, we all get picked on a little bit. When when you're going in there and you're you're putting off good energy, you get energy back. You get mm-hmm. things to happen. Um, as 
paranormal investigators, much of our technology equipment relies on a premise of being in complete darkness. You know, that's all good and well, but it can deprive the ener the entity of an energy form to manifest. So why do we always turn off the lights? Why do we? Jake, do you know why? Why do we I mean, always turn on? I have thoughts about it. I'm not going to say that what I think is 100% necessarily correct because I, you know, everyone's going to have their own opinions on this, but I think it it partially comes from the way we've been trained to think. Uh I mean, if you look at horror movies, when you sit there and you watch the horror movies on screen, the lighting tends to be very low or very minimal. And I think it's because it plays with our psyche a little bit. And True. Uh, there's this idea of if it's if it's in the dark, we don't know if there's something standing right in front of us or right next to us. And so it's this idea of we fear what we don't know or what we don't understand. So if we take away our ability to interact or to understand the world around us, all of a sudden our mind opens up to all of these possibilities and says, well, what if that is right in front of me and I just don't even know? Or uh, like a little kid with the monster in the closet or the boogeyman under the bed. Yeah. When it's this idea of the cover of darkness is bad for us because now we can't see our surroundings. But then the other side of that is, again, just looking at it from being a, a living person because I've never been on the other side. <laughs> but I could certainly see how we have been trained to think that whatever monsters might be lurking in the dark could use that to their advantage because they can see us, but we can't see them. And so then you've got this change in dynamic of who's really in control of the situation. And I think that that plays a lot into why we think uh, we need to shut the lights off. And I've heard it said before in different different ways and through different people is that true hauntings, with the exception of it being something residual, true hauntings will happen any time of the day. True. And I think that that's exactly correct because if it truly is something that's actually happening, it should be able to occur any time of day, whether it's light or whether it's dark. So I think it's more of a psychological mind game that we tend to play with ourselves because uh, we, when we shut the lights off, we're setting the mood. We're creating some sort of environment when we shut the lights off. And it's like you've, you've done before and we've seen done bef before uh, when we take groups with ghost hunts and we do uh, the sensory deprivation and give them the blindfold. There are a lot of people that are very reluctant to do that because well, you're taking away one of their abilities or one of the ways that they can understand the world. And when we take away that, that way for us to understand the world, now all of a sudden we're looking at it going, well, what, what could really be there? Or what else could really be the cause of this and what could really be happening? And I think that's where... Uh, people get the idea that you have to turn lights off in order to get paranormal activity. And see, the way I kind of look at it is, you know, there's a couple of theories already out there that kind of substantiate what we're talking about. They, um, they, 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 they cover the, the need for energy in the air um, that is most notable. Well, let me rephrase this. The need for energy in the air that is is of the most notable paranormal, where notable paranormal activity increases is, and this is all natural, is barometric pressure and electrical mm -hmm. storms. So if you're, if you are doing something and when, like when lightning charges all the particles in the air, that that's a lot of energy. You know, it, we can't even harness that. It's impossible for us to harness electric, uh, uh, you know, uh, a lightning bolt. We just there, we have nothing to hold that much energy. So what? What is it? What, are, what am I trying to say here? I'm tongue tied now. This is something I don't always do. Uh, not talk, but get tongue tied. Um, you know, is it safe to say 
that, you know, we always talk about, you know, we're going to be in a dark place, but there's a lightning storm or a rain going on with lots of thunder and lightning. And people go, I'm even more scared. So you've got some people that are scared of lightning and storms. They just don't like them. They've never mm-hmm. liked them since the chance they were growing up. But right. is, it, is it safe to say that the lightning is not only charging us? Because, we, you know, some people can feel the lightning in the air. When it, when it cracks, I've been, a lot of times I've been able to, when I was in, from my accidents in the military, I'm a little, I'm a little sensitive to certain electricities. Um, I can feel a lot of static electricity. When I build up a lot of static electricity in me, and most people can feel it, but I can really feel it. And actually, it's almost like a physical pain. And when I discharge it into the back of somebody's ear or their arm, and yes, I said ear, because I like to shock people on the back of the ear because it's funny. Um, but it hurts me just as much as it hurts them. And I get a lot of energy build up. But when we're in an a- area and that lightning's charging us, it's got to be charging them too. So why don't mm-hmm. we just turn the lights on? Turn the lights on during a lightning storm. They don't have to be really bright. Turn the lights on and see what happens. Go through your investigation with your lights on once. Try it with all the lights on. If you start to see shadows, because, you know, shadows are really sometimes hard to see in the dark because they're dark and we're in the dark. Everybody get the picture? It's freaking dark. Sometimes we can't see those shadows and sometimes we can really see them. Sometimes we can be just sitting there and you know, you're in the daylight and you see something move. And you're like, what the heck was that? And you're looking around the corner and you're looking everywhere going, um, I know I'm alone here. The heck just moved over there. And that's in broad daylight. So why can't we go ahead and why wouldn't we be able to see this, hear this, and something else shows up in the daylight? Why not try to do it during the light? Do it, do a part. Everybody wants to do the investigations at 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Y'all, if you saw my face on uh, on live right now, you know why I'm in the dark. I have a face for radio, not for television. Mm-mm. Take a lot of makeup to fix this face. But you, if you start to do things and start to break it down, I remember um, Edinburgh. The first time we ever went to Edinburgh was just a little over a year ago. Go, If you remember, it was cold, just as cold then as it is now, and it was nasty out. Oh my God, I thought I was going to freeze. But I was was setting up cameras and constantly looking over my shoulder because I always felt like I was being watched. And then after I got done, I sat down. I started just relaxing. I was going to make a a couple of phone calls. Uh, Gee, thanks, JP. Face for DJing. Yeah, I got you on that one. Um, I sat down. And then all of a sudden I started hearing things. Like, okay, something's I'm playing with my own mind here. So I took a couple of deep breaths, closed my eyes, opened my eyes, started looking around. And that's when I started hearing the humming coming up and down the hallways. It was a lady humming. And it kind of got to me because I'm going, it's the broad daylight. What's going on here? Well, then I heard a door. And then there was a knock. And I kept chasing it. I was all over the place. If you watch the video, I've got it posted on my on my Facebook channel. Or actually, I think it's, I don't remember which one it's on, whether it's on Riverside Iowa Paranormal or Talk Live Paranormal or it's on mine. Um, if you watch that video, I kind of freak out a little bit. Y'all, it was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The sun was up. It was cold. Just some, I, I, I don't, I think we need to look at doing more daytime investigation. We need to do as just as much daytime investigation as we do nighttime investigation. Because I agree with what we've been talking about here. I agree with the fact that, you know, we talked about this last week. The moon, well, the sun is pure energy. That's exactly what it is. If that's able to put off energy, and we, we can measure that energy from the earth, whether it be solar, whether it be heat, whatever, we get it here on the earth. We, we, we are able to utilize it. We're able to you know, use it. Why can't a spirit use that in the middle of the day? Why can't they grab onto that energy and build up and hold onto it and do something? 
during the day. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I don't know how you feel about that. To me, like I said, I would like to see some more daytime stuff being done, some more stuff done where the natural Earth's natural energies are. And d does the sun help charge the Earth? And if, the, if, if so, we always talk about when we're grounding ourselves, we ground ourselves to Mother Earth. Because mm -hmm. that's, that's what we do. Well, is it that we're actually grounding ourselves, or are we drawing energy to make us feel better? Because technically, all we are is an entity with a, a spirit with a body, or a, or a, or a an app. An, uh, what do you? What, what, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, a specter with a body. I'm here, but I know someday I'm not going to be here. I know someday it's all going to be over with. I'm going to leave this shell. Well, am I still here? Or did I, do I move on? Do I know that probably where I'm going to end up is going to be someplace really, really, really warm? Possibly. Um, I don't know. Or am I going to be stuck here in between two realms? The realms, that, between the realms that we call heaven and earth, or whatever you want to believe in. Am I going to be stuck there? Am I going to be chasing all the people down on Ghost Hunts USA and trying to scare the crap out of them? That's what I'm kind of hoping for, because I think that would be fun. No reaction on that one, Jake? I was trying. Uh, I, was, I wasn't sure where you were going to keep going with that. I was <laughs> well, just to see how this is all going to play out. Well, you know, how do I want to say that? And this is where you. This is where I'm. I'm kind of looking for your input on this, Jake. So, like physics in general, if they're if they are truly such and honest, they emit a, a particularly high vibration when attempting to communicate communicate with a spirit. Um, of I'm sorry, not physics, psychics. <laughs> sorry, my brain went completely dead there. Uh, a psychic usually can like raise their own vibration. And that's where we kind of, I think that's where we left off last week was talking about the, the different vibration and different levels that people put off, which a vibration is an energy. See, we're all circling back around to this whole energy thing. What makes it so they can put off a particular, particularly high vibration or put off that energy level that allows someone else to come in or allows someone, a spirit to come to them to be seen or be heard. Why can't I do it? I mean, I don't have, I know what your abilities are, Jake, and I, I've seen that, I've seen it work, and I've seen you do what you do, and you're very good at it. But I, again, I put you in the same box, and I hate putting a box on people, but in the same box is a lot of the other people that we work with, where I'm in technically kind of a bit of a jealous because I can't do what you do, or I don't. I don't know how to. And I'm not, I'll put it this way: I don't know how to yet, because it's. I don't know if it's something that can be learned, or if it's just something that is always there, and you you're either born with it or you're not. I to piggyback off of that because I know you've been told this before, and you kind of uh, corrected yourself a little bit when you said yet. And I kind of want to go back to that for a second because I know you've been told, because uh, you've told me you've been told, but I've also heard it from several different sources throughout my life that every person has the ability to do, do these things. Now, the way that each person does them is going to be different depending on the individual, but everyone has the capacity um uh, to obtain some sort of um, psychic ability, whether that be um, empathic abilities, whether that be mediumistic, whether it be, be strictly psychic or ES or um, being able to see the future, precognizant, um, clear audience, clear sentience, clairvoyance, all those different things. Uh, I'm not saying that everyone has the ability to do every single one of them, but I think everybody has the ability to do something. 
And I think where it comes down to is as we get older, uh, we start to train our minds to not pay attention to the same uh, types of things that we did when we were children. And I think we talked about this last week, too, that kids are, and children are naturally more receptive to these things, um, such as having imaginary friends. Uh, I know a lot of times when, when kids go to their parents saying that they've seen um, an old man in their room or there's another boy or another little girl in their room that they, then they talk to, a lot of parents immediately go, oh, that's nice, they have an imaginary friend. And then as we get older, we get trained to think in that same way, and we start to leave all of that other stuff behind. And, and it's also, I've also heard it said that kids are also more in tune with their third eye. And as a result, being, in more, to, being more in tune with their third eye, they're also, um, it's easier for them to access those um, extra abilities. And then as we get older and we get trained to um, suppress all of that, we lose the ability to access those things as readily. So I think what it comes down to is a lot of mental discipline, um, building up the ability to, um, get your, to get yourself into a mindset where you're open to those kinds of things. Um, like when I read tarot cards, there are times where I have dealt the cards before for a reading I'm doing for myself or for whatever, and I just look at it, and I'm like, I have no idea what this is trying to tell me, because I'm not in the right mindset. And then once I get into that mindset, all of a sudden it all becomes clear. Yeah. And so I think when you're talking about the ability to raise their vibration, and I think it comes from... Uh, a a mental capacity and a mental discipline to gain that control over their body. And so, um, go, go ahead. So the, I just found an article a little while ago, and the the freaky part is, is I was reading what they were that they said in this article and listening to you, and it's weird because it's the exact same thing what you just said. Um, so I don't want to think anybody thinks I'm stealing this. This is actually from it's unexplained mysteries.com. And this is uh, from an article written May 24th, 2008 called ghost hunting, ghost hunting etiquette 102 by the art. The person that wrote it is Mysteria, M Y S T E R R A. And you can go there and look at this. Um, I gotta find that spot again. It says, and I'm going to read this word for word, and it's going to say everything literally you just said. Everyone can alter their aura or their energy field to communicate with the other side. It simply requires practice and trusting your own abilities. The adapted energy field that psychics emit is a virtual beacon to the paranormal. That's why people consider themselves sensitive or empath, empathic and are more potential to, to attract and communicate. But seeing that nowadays we are desperately wanting uh, to see the proof of ghost, we must utilize human technology as much as possible. The perfect end result being an actual videotaped interview with a spirit exchanging information. We all know that's probably not going to happen. But we, and here I hate using this term, but we are, we're called ghost hunters, right? So let's break down the implication of a hunter. A hunter travels to a, a, praise, a potential praise location in their natural environment. The hunter set up, sets up various traps, baits, and strategizes to the best, best capture his opponent. Correct? Like deer hunters. They go out in the woods. They sit. They wait. They watch it all year long. They know it's supposed to be here. Here's the problem. There are certain rules and common senses that the hunter uses to entice his prey based on observation and research. We should apply, I think we should apply these different terms, these hunting terms, to ourselves as paranormal investigators. And we see that we are attempting to capture a certain unpredictable prey. The problem is we're not complying by the prey's rules. 
if it's, right. ener if it's energy that the prey desires, we must comply by these rules. Um, if a ghost or a spirit or an entity are drawing energy to themselves to create an electromagnetic field, technically is what they're doing, it must, it must be necessary for them to do this in order to manifest and communicate. We need to create an energy source from which they can draw upon so that they can charge their existing uh, destiny in order to allow for a more efficient, permeable, and um, a permeability of a free of free space, essentially luring them in, enticed by energy. So this is all kind of keeps coming back around to the whole energy thing. We need as to, as as paranormal investigators to. I don't want to say that. We we need to look at an area. We need to go to that area. You know, most people do go to an area in the daylight. If if we combine the theories that the ghost needs energy to manifest or communicate in our realm, we should then attempt to find a source of energy that can be safely, there's the key word, placed within the desired effect. You don't want to put off a uh, Jacob's Ladder in the middle of an old barn shooting 30 foot high electrical bolts in the air because you're probably going to catch that place on fire. Mm -hmm. But but I think we we have to play with many forms of energy to do it. Now, one of the ones that we've been using quite a lot with our group is the plasma balls. They're safe, but they put off a, cla a crap load of electricity. They put off a massive, massive amounts of energy. But is that something that would work at every location? Is, is it something we can do? Um, and then, then we have to look at also the different levels of energy. Is there, is there a possibility that we can put off too much energy for a spirit and actually push them away? You know, there are studies that have shown that, that High levels can cause humans to be feel really bad, paranoia, dizziness, uh, nausea. You know, there's some of the stuff that the, the common common symptoms. Um, and yeah, you'll get this a lot of times. Hallucinations when there's too much energy, there's too much electricity in the air. So somebody said, told me once, they said, "Hey, why don't you go over? There's that that cemetery right there, right next to that power plant distribution area. There should be lots of energy." Is it too high? Are we putting off too much? You know, I, I don't... I think it could be. What about... Just think about it. Think about it in the summer. What Now, when it gets hot enough, we don't want to do anything. True. And so, I'm trying to... What about and, trying to make sense of it in my own brain? Not so. Okay, me, maybe this will help. What about and I'm I'm trying to jump back into my own brain here, but I'm going to need my my science boss here on the side of it. Um, I'm trying to remember what we used. Was it called a Van de Graaff generator or something like that, where it produced a lots of static electricity? You'll see people put their hands on it. Yeah, those those are the the things that you put your hand on and make sure if you have any makes your hair stand up. Hey, that wasn't funny. Um, is that what it's called? Is, is it the Van de Graaff? Yeah, Van de Graaff generator. Yep. See, I did listen in school. For all you people out there that said Bill didn't listen, I saved the stuff that I needed. <laughs> Think of that one. So, but I know they put off a lot of electricity, but, but mm -hmm. and we know that really it's mostly it's 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 almost it's it's all static electricity though, isn't it? Yes. So if we were to, and, and static electricity, everyone knows what static electricity is. Everybody's walked through carpets and, you know, zapped a cat on the ear, went to touch something, a doorknob, and ah, it hurts, especially in the wintertime where it's really dry. There's not a lot of moisture in the air, you know, because why would we have moisture in the air when there's, it's all white outside and nasty with all the moisture frozen, which is probably the reason why we don't have a lot of moisture in the air. It's freaking frozen. So... What if we tried one of those, say, in a place like, and I'm going to jump back and use Edinburgh again. If we could have brought in something, and I don't even know if we can make one. 
Is it, are they hard to make? Um, I don't know. I've never built one on my own, but I suppose as long as you could find, you need a belt, you need some sort of, um, uh, the word is escaping me right now, but it's going to, something to move the belt, because it's the movement of the belt that actually creates the static electricity. Okay. I'd have to look at all the different parts of it again and see if we can't find something to substitute in and build one ourselves i hate to say it but you know what i'm doing right now looking up how to build one well no i already did that part but i just w want to know it um if amazon's got a small one. Oh, they, i know they do what much these things cost let's take a look well oh, they're not that... on the voltage too So that isn't really that expensive. It's a low voltage. They have them for like a um, American educational product. So it's probably something used in a science room. Uh-huh. See, hey, folks, we try to give you ideas out there. The Van de Graaff V-A-N-D-E-G-R-A-A-F-F -F generator. Um, it looks like you can actually build one. The one person on here... When I just typed it in and just did a search, looks like somehow they build it using a a pop can and some plastic. I want to see if they got the the list of stuff. So it looks like they're using a piece of PVC with a hole drilled in it and rubber bands that mm -hmm. will stretch the whole way. Looks like they've got a dowel, yep. a bunch of a bunch of like a nylon wrapping over it. So then they put the rubber band to the oh the Pepsi can's got a well the Coke can. Sorry, got to use Coke. Got to go with what I'm seeing. Okay, so that's there. Then so where do you put the other end? That wouldn't be doesn't look like that's really that hard to make, huh? Check that out, y'all. Um, and I put that challenge out to anybody who is uh uh. Out, anybody out there that wants to try to use this, see if you can find one of them Van de Graaff generators or make your own or do something. Because that, that if static electricity, and it seems like to me everything we keep talking about is a lot of static electricity. There's a lot of, because static electricity is a lot of energy in the air. If that's what works best, and I think you, that maybe that should be the challenge. Try different things. Try the plasma balls. The plasma balls, for anybody who doesn't remember, are them round balls that you, you can walk up and put your hands on. It's got the electricity shooting through it, and you touch it, and it shoots just to one spot of your hand or whatever. They have them at Spencer's in the mall. They have a lot of them there. Um, we see, I go there and look at a lot of, a lot of them. Um, and you can use those. Them are what we've tried. Maybe we need to look at a, the Van de Graaff generator, the static generator. Maybe we should try that and put that out. Maybe that would help out build up the energy in in an area uh, to to give the spirits more. But I still think you need to try different energy sources at different times of the day. Because I don't know. Maybe what do you think, mm -hmm. Jake? Maybe, would you think that would is going to change throughout the day of what? entities or what spirits that we might encounter is the what time of the day it is i don't know that that would change i mean maybe you might get more intelligent and less of the residual or maybe you'll just get different residual encounters i don't know it's hard to tell and maybe it depends on on where you're going to the location that you're at. So, you know, Jake and I keep throwing around intelligent and residual. For those who don't know the difference between intelligent haunting and residual haunting, the easiest way is to start off with a residual haunting. If you've ever put a video on and just played it in a loop, where it constantly just keeps doing the same thing over and over, that's what the explanation of a residual haunting would be. It's something that doesn't know it's doing it, it just keeps doing the same thing all the time. So if it, if you're sitting there and at six o'clock at night you see a lady cross in front of one of your doors in your in your living room, 
and it happens every night at 6 o'clock, no matter if you're standing there or not, you watch it happen, or something happens at a certain time all the time, that's a residual haunting. An intelligent haunting is when we're talking about going out and saying, hey, can you knock on the wall? And then you hear that. And then all, then you go, can you whistle? Or, you know, you do the old shave and the haircut. Dun, 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 and you hear, dun, dun. it's intelligent. It's able to respond to you. It's, it's, it's working on bringing you towards it or, or giving you the answers. Them are the ones that were, when you see people talk about the spirit in, interacted with me or it came to me and talked to me and it's done it three times and each time it's telling me something different, that would be an intelligent haunting. If it comes to you every night and goes, uh, you're in my spot, and then it just goes away, and the next night at the same time, you're in my spot, it's either Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory, or it, it's, it, it's an intelligent haunting. I finally got you to laugh. This has been a long hour of trying to make you laugh at certain times, and you finally oh, got just, tired. I've, I've been quietly chuckling to myself. Oh, don't do it quietly. Let it out, man. It's not good to hold it back. Um, but that's where I think we need to try. Um, we've got we've got to try different things. We've got to try. We've got we've always got to be branching out. We've always got to be trying new things. Try different sources of energy. Try blindfolding your stuff. Take away one of the go into sensory deprivation. Try the Gunsfeld experiment. I can't wait to try that again. Again. Um, try different things. If it sounds really stupid to you in your brain, you're like, I ain't going to try that. Why? Try it. You never know what you're going to get. And if it works and you can reproduce it or you, you know it, then let us know. Let us know what works because we're going to keep sharing stuff with you. I've already shared my pyramid that I built, um, an omnidirectional EMF detector. It's not that tough to build. Um, I'm not going to give you my plans because if it if I can sell it, I will. Maybe you never know. Hmm? You never know. Um, there's other. I've, we have other little experiments that we're going to try, and if they work, or you know, different. Where we we keep talking about energy sources here, because, and there's there's all sorts of energy. There's light energy. There's electricity energy. There's you know. Sound energy. Have you tried sound? I don't know how about... I'm trying... Jake, what do you think in your experience, what you've seen and you've done, do you think a higher frequency of sound puts off more energy than a lower frequency? I mean, when you talk about waves essentially sound is a different type of wave than light um light is called a transverse which means it's the one that goes up and down yep. whereas um sound is called a compression wave so it's more of a push and a pull um which is why if you've ever seen a speaker when a speaker is making noise, you'll see it kind of push out and then go in and out. And what it's doing is it's actually pushing on the air molecules around it. Uh, and then that wave propagates by pushing molecules together, which is how sound works. Uh, and so then frequency is then, uh, instead of how many of the high points or low points, like what you would see with a transverse wave, it's how many of those air pulses are going to pass through a certain point at a certain time. And so the higher the frequency, the more of those air pulses you're going to get. The lower the frequency, uh, the less sound, or the, I'm sorry, the less of those air pulses you're going to get uh, to move through a certain point per unit time. But essentially, the idea is the same, that the higher the frequency, the more energy there is associated with the wave. And the lower the frequency, the less energy there is associated with it. But then it goes back to what we talked about earlier. Maybe different spirits will respond to different types or different wavelengths of energy. Oh. Instead of it just being um, higher or lower, maybe it depends on, on the individual entity. So if we can combine sound... 
light and that static electricity from that the Van de Graaff generator, if we can figure out the, the right combination, we should be able to produce a lot of energy all at once. Yes. In theory. Yeah. So, okay, so we've just... If anybody who's listening, anybody who's watching, that's something for you to try. Um, I do know there's some people that talk about, you know, I only hear these people, I only hear things when I'm playing my radio too loud. Well, think about it. You're putting off a lot of energy. Higher frequencies, louder. Uh, things are going out there. And like Jake said, it's, you know, it's, it's things bouncing off each other, producing energy is what is it, it boils down to. Don't limit yourselves and your exper- experiments to only what you've learned from what you've watched others do. Explore and trust your instincts. You might, you might be one of the ones that discovers a true secret hidden behind the par- paranormal veil. Um, it's something that we need to really look at. We all watch it on TV. And we all see what what the old group taps did because they're the ones that kind of brought this to the forefront. We all see what, what different groups do lockdown paranormal, all these guys and what they try, but there's gotta be something else out there because if we're all doing the same thing, we're always, we're only going to probably get the same results. Try combining things, try combining different levels and different energies and different, any things together. See what happens. You may see that it works, it works well, well in one area, but it doesn't work in another area. Um, just keep keep reaching for it. Keep reaching out there. We got we got less than a minute left. I want to thank everybody for listening, and I want to thank anybody who's watching on the show on live right now. Amanda, thank you, Jake. You're awesome as always. Thank you for being here. I love how the scientific side of this whole thing. Shannon, I wish you were here with us next week, maybe. Hopefully, she's got electricity. So, guys, thank you very much. Uh, The only thing I got left to say is, y'all, hey, we'll see you guys in the dark next week right here. Thanks a lot, guys. Talk to you later.